Hey everyone, so I just wanted to make a video about my first few days on clinical placement as a radiography student here in Sydney, Australia. And the reason I'm making this video is because I wish something like this existed for me back in the day when I was going on my first placement. As I had so many questions and uncertainties that I know much more about now, so hopefully this is useful to you. Essentially, I'm going to be talking about the whole process from contacting your supervisor before you even go in, how I found the whole experience, that is sort of my experience in particular, my confidence levels at the time and my advice to you on that, what to do about your competencies and how best to approach getting them signed off and how many you should be aiming for, and some other important things that I really think make a difference not only to this placement, but your future employment. So things such as your punctuality, your professionalism, and your first impressions. Also keep in mind that this is all my experiences and the lessons that I learned along the way. So your specific situation may differ, but I suspect at least for the first placement, it's all relatively the same. And everything I talk about, you should probably know anyways. As always, timestamps down below for convenience. All right, let's get into it. I guess starting off with before you even go on placement. What you want to do is about two weeks before you start, contact your supervisor and have an introductory discussion with them. Now I remember this was a very daunting task for me. Like, okay, I'm going to call them and they're going to pick up. And what the hell am I going to say? Like, what, how's that going to look like? And you know how you freeze in the moment where you think it's like this big task and you lose track of your words and it's all a mess? I don't know, maybe it was just me. I remember just having a fight or flight response to the whole idea of it. But look, I've been on the other side of it myself and where I'm a supervisor of some students calling to talk to me and it's genuinely a nice conversation. So rest assured that your supervisor is actually looking forward to your call. They've received the email and details so they know you're coming. So it's actually nice to put a voice to a name. So literally just think of it as though you're calling a friend and having a nice discussion. If you're lost, here's what you can say. Hey Alex, how are you? Thanks for taking the time. So my name is Sahand, I'm from Sydney Uni and I wanted to make an introductory call to let you know that I'll be coming into your site in about two weeks. And I'm really excited to meet you on the team. Now, this is my very first placement, so I'm pretty keen to help out with the department and really learn from everyone. Could you tell me a little bit about what I need to do before I come in and what I need to bring in, you know, besides the basics such as my markers and competency manual and stuff? And also what's the best way of getting there? Is there like parking or should I bus it? You know, something like that. Now, obviously you're not gonna say this word for word, you know, and not let them respond, but use that as kind of the guide of what you will say and the, how the conversation will be about. It's very simple and introductory. And what I like most is that it kind of just makes your first encounter with them a lot less awkward. Okay, that's good. But sometimes you call in and they're in the middle of a procedure. And so you okay, okay, no worries. I'll call another time. Then you call another time and they're still in another procedure and the cycle continues. So, and this happened to me a bunch of times, uh, so I'm speaking from experience. But in any event, at this stage, you've shown that you've taken initiative to call and that looks good. So then at this stage, what you want to do is just write them an email. Again, kind of saying the same things that you did on the phone, but sort of structured a bit better and written in a way that makes it easier to respond to. So you could write something like this. Dear Mona, hope you're doing well. My name is Sahand. I'm from the University of Sydney and I'm excited to begin my first placement with you and your team at X Hospital on the 1st of April. I tried calling you a few times, however, you were busy with patients, so I thought I'd kind of reach out via email. Could you kindly tell me what I need to know and if I need to bring anything before I come in? Looking forward to your response. Many thanks, Sahat. Something like that. Again, use this as inspiration, put your own little twist on it and have fun with it. Okay, cool. Now that you've done that, Let's move on to the other things. Now, let me tell you about my overall impressions and expectations while I was there. The first thing I remember was being very nervous. You know, I wasn't sure what to expect or if I was fully prepared. The first few hours of your first day are kind of just like an introduction. You get shown the department, you meet the team, you say hi to everyone, and you find where the best places are to get coffee, which is the most important point of all. You sit down and set some goals with your supervisor on what and how much you hope to achieve on the few weeks that you're there, and that's pretty much it. The first few x-rays, you might want to observe how they do it, get a feel of how the department and the workflow is, and just try to emulate them. And so depending on how much you've covered at uni, you'll be comfortable with doing different examinations, and, that, and this will be different depending on if you did the undergrad or the postgrad course. I remember for me, I did the GEM program, which was the two-year postgrad course. 
and before I got sent to placement, we'd only covered upper and lower extremity at the time and like chest, but things like spines, abdomens, pelvis and hips, we hadn't covered yet and I almost went nowhere near those, which was a big mistake. And I encourage you to learn from my mistake and not be so afraid of them. Because in my mind, I was like, oh, I haven't covered this at uni, so I don't really know how to do it. And if I don't know how to do it, I'm not going to then take on a real life patient. It was to the point where my supervisor noticed and at one point was like, you know, Sahand, it's okay. You know, you can just look at a few that we do and it's not that hard. All you need to know is some positioning techniques and where to tell the patient to move. And that's pretty much it. You just practice and you'll get it. I wish in retrospect that hadn't got to the point where my supervisor felt the need to sit down and have a talk to me about it. And instead I showed initiative in wanting to learn and having a go. So learn from my mistake here and put yourself a little in the deep end. You're always gonna be under supervision of someone. You won't really be left alone. So don't be afraid to give it a go and have a learn of the different projectors that you may have not even covered yet. It goes a long way. So that's kind of my advice on it. Now let's talk about your competencies. So you're expected to have all competencies signed off before the end of your last placement in order to be able to graduate from the degree. So we had four placement blocks. Yours might differ. I know the undergrads usually have more blocks, but they're shorter. But anyways, my general rule was that I really want to be able to have everything signed off, done and dusted by your second last placement. So that in your last placement, you can really focus on fine tuning your skills and actually trying to secure a job there. But that's a whole other topic which I can talk about. Let me know if you're interested. But bringing this back to where you're likely now, the question is how many competencies should you aim for to achieve in your first placement and what's the best way to approach them? Well, I'd be conservative and not expect to get a crazy amount because you're still learning everything. And in fact, you will get times where you will fail and you won't get that signature and that's okay. What you could hope to do is at least try to get the easy ones out of the way, you know, the ones where you just get a lot of. Um, so you start off with your chest x-ray, which actually can be a lot harder than you think. Your hands, fingers, wrists, forearms, um, for your upper extremity and then your lower extremity you can do your foot ankle x-rays and that that's about it I'll keep it simple don't go overboard because that's already six different competencies and keep in mind that before you go on your official attempt you generally need to show at least four other good attempts if you manage to get all those then you're doing great now don't get discouraged if you don't that's still okay it's your first placement and you may have just gotten to a side that isn't really busy for whatever reason and doesn't really do the, those particular x-rays, whatever the reason is. I think the best way to approach these is to write them down as goals that you hope to achieve by the end of that placement and actually tell your supervisor so together you can devise a plan. So that means not only they'll call you when they see a wrist, for example, but also it'll give you a clearer path that you have from the timeline that you have to work with. So for example, if you have six competencies and you know you're there for six weeks, that's one a week. And keep in mind that you have to have four good attempts for each of those. So that's almost like one attempt a day, which when you put it that way, it sounds very scary, but trust me, it's not. Just set a goal. Every morning you come in, tell yourself, okay, today's the day. I'm really going to make sure I nail my foot x-rays. I've read up on it. I know the centering points. I know what to include. I know my ideal exposure. I know how best to position the patient and what instructions to give them. That way it's much more organized. And once you do it, you cross it off your list, which is super satisfying. All right, that's enough of competencies. Basically try to get as much as you can, but in your first placement, I wouldn't be too worried if you didn't get that much because it's your first time and you're still learning. The next thing is what I like to call proactive punctuality. Now I don't have to tell you that being on time is important, but sometimes, you know, I feel like I have to because in some instances, it makes such a big impression to your team. It's one of those 80, 20 things where for 20% of the effort, it actually has an 80% effect because in your head, you might think, oh, I was on time today. I was only late two and a half minutes. No, you were late. And by the way, I'm talking to myself here as well. I'm not perfect on this. The way I see it is that this small thing can seemingly have a big impact on how your supervisor and the staff think of you, especially when you're a student. I really like this quote by Bedros Koulian on punctuality, which I try to live by. And it says, if you're on time, you're late. If you're early, you're on time. And then if you're late, it's unforgivable. Pretty harsh, I know, but that's how I think it should be. Be proactive with your punctuality. Actually do something to make sure that you account for the traffic, that you get enough sleep the night before, and that your clothes and bag are packed for the morning. You know, anything to really make sure that you're consistently punctual because that eventually doesn't go unnoticed. 
what will go noticed is you being late. All right, now something else that closely follows what I just talked about is your professional presentation. And from what I've seen, most students actually follow this one pretty well, but there are still a few that unfortunately don't get the message. Look, people are always gonna judge you by how you look and how you present yourself. So it's in your best interest to try to show up and present yourself in a professional manner. To wear some nice shoes and pants, to put on a nice fragrance and brush that beautiful hair because you deserve it and because it shows that you care. And when someone takes care of their appearance, it's a signal to others that they can take care of a business and that they can rely on you. Now this last one I'm calling impeccable impressions. And it's the idea that you wanna leave that place having left a lasting and memorable impression. How does one do that though? Well, for me, it involved having an open mind, showing interest in others and being okay with failure. Have an open mind because you still have a lot to learn. And just because someone does something different to how you were taught it at uni doesn't mean they're wrong. It just means that they have another way of doing something. Show interest in others is the easiest way to get on someone's good side. To have them teach you things that they otherwise would have kept to themselves. And lastly, you have to be okay with failure. One of my colleagues used to tell me that fail stands for first attempt in learning. So you've got to stop seeing it as a failure and more as an experiment that didn't give you the results that you hypothesized. Doesn't mean the experiment failed. It just means that you now have an alternate hypothesis. And that's useful too, because now you know what didn't work and where your own shortcomings were. So you now know better for your next attempt in learning. Okay, a lot covered in this video and well done for staying till the end. Let's do a quick recap of what we covered. First, we talked about contacting your supervisor. About two weeks out, try calling. If it doesn't work, then email them. Then it was about the overall impressions and expectations, keeping in mind that this is what I experienced and your specific experience may differ, but they're just as the same. Go in prepared, look forward to learning from the team and you'll have a great time. Third was on the competencies. Basically try to become proficient in the procedures first and then go in for the signature. If you find yourself having to repeat a lot and you're not getting those competencies, it just means that you still have some work to do and that's okay. It's literally why you're there. Fourth and fifth were on the importance of punctuality and professionalism, all things that you can do and that you have control over. Excuses are excuses. Don't blame the traffic for being late. Leave earlier to account for it. And lastly, we talked about your first and lasting impressions. What thoughts and feelings people form about you can be both beneficial and damaging. So please do all that you can to make it an impeccable one. And you'll thank me later for how much an impact that has on your future employment. All right, that's it for this one. If you found this video helpful, I really appreciate a like, please. And good luck on your placement. See you in the next one. Stay curious.